Hey, welcome to a special edition of Just Calvin. Uh, this is um, today I got uh, propaganda, uh, uh, who's running uh, for uh, city council and one who is running as first of all, especially. Yeah. And is running for a judge, a judge, I should say. Uh, I looked her up a little bit. And she has experienced nothing but prostitution or anything that, you know, basically is to uh, punish. Uh, she, as far as I can look up, uh, she doesn't have any experience with regards to defending or to, or from look on the other side of the fence, if you will. Uh, nothing but prostitution and uh, prosecuting or stuff of that nature. Let's see. Yeah. So, and on the under flyer, it shows that she has experience with the mental health, or, you know, mental health uh, care as a uh, mental health advocate, but yet, Nothing in my, re my research showed that she had any experience in any way, shape, or form of adv advocacy or uh, working within that community. So I don't know that's just to uh, placate those with mental illnesses or wherever else, it may be, who knows, I don't know. Um, anyways, my, I will not be going for her. Yeah, uh, I think she needs to learn the other, the other side of the fence before she uh, gets my vote. Anyway, uh, these so far, uh, I have found at least one of them, well, two of them really. One of which, uh, Lotus was Barso, uh, idea. Uh, she's part of the new, um, uh, police uh, panel uh, that uh, raises the questions of the nature. Uh, let me share a screen. Let me show you a little bit of what I found. Uh, first, the uh, upcoming screen is not anything about her, but uh, uh, more or less about uh, Nick Bankson, who was also ready for counsel. Uh, let me get to where I'm trying to get that now. now. Uh, so yeah, this is the this is the information or the information she the uh, the uh, place she works at. Um, it says a, it's a 501c3 nonprofit, but it's also U.S. tax exempt, which means whatever money that these people give to them, you know that the, they don't pay tax on any part of that. Um, which okay, but as you can see. Nothing but corporations. Obviously, there's no um, so a lot of that. A, a lot of these. A lot of these corporations are uh, union busting, or um, I think these guys are actually going through a union thing right now in the first place. Yeah, you know, Mark. I used to work at. They they used to be union. I'm not sure. And I haven't been looking up on them. Uh, I didn't know that talk about the foundation. That's kind of scary to me. But anyway, um, but yeah. She's on the, uh, the police advisory board, uh, but yes, yeah, she has all these um, supporters for her uh, other um, foundation. I think uh, she should not be on that kind of advisory board, considering the fact that, that she could be the reason why that the police, I say, are not all that worried about getting rid of funding or there's not, not, there's not a lot of fight to keep the funding. I'm guessing these people already pay enough uh, to fund that, you know, through whatever organization that, that actually directly pays the police, the police department. I don't know. I'm not involved in that. It's only a guess on my part. Uh, let's see, the middle man right here. He is to get to that now. That's it. He was involved in 
uh, projects that would benefit Sunai two, two specific areas, North Linden, as you see, and Hill, and Hill Top, I think. Uh, but when I looked at the population and the, um, and the, uh, and the median income, uh, this is why I found it. It's far more white collar, like businesses, you know, CEOs, and some of that other thing. And not much blue collar, like, you know, plumbers, teachers, you know, that sort of thing. A uh, lot more um, private companies, as you can see, a lot, a lot less government workers. Um, and not for profit is like 780, as, as you can see on that. Let's see, average people per household. Um, it, there's a lot of non family households, which is like 4,008. Uh, so it just tells me that'd be like you know, small businesses around the area. And the family household is just barely more than that, not by much. So this just tells me that he, I mean, the main projects he's been lined with were the ones that were to do business uh help small businesses in the more influential areas not you know like columbus or you know i mean he's running he's running uh for a seat uh for columbus uh columbus city council um and he definitely does not give my vote on that i mean look at the stuff he's doing here He's not fixing, he's not creating any low income housing. He's not creating any high jobs in that way. He's fixing up basically the well to do neighborhoods. There's no, there's no point of, uh, of um, point for someone who's going to be doing that in the first place. Like, no, thank you. Tell me a plan you have as far as uh, low income in Columbus and the surrounding area, not like, uh, not like Columbus or Bexley. This is more the affluent. Um, the neighborhoods. So. Now him, uh, he's the first one I looked at. Uh, openly gay man, married, apparently, which I didn't know. I didn't know you could marry. Uh, uh, I, know there, I didn't know that Ohio allowed gay marriage. Was fine. It's good. I like, I like to hear that, but I don't. I didn't know that they actually had that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so far I'm not listening to anything negative about him as far as like, you know, something you have to really look at, but um, yeah, yeah he's, uh, his, uh, his uh, vote is kind of up in the air right now because I don't know much about him. I don't know much about him except for what I've researched. Let's see. Now you. So this is the uh, female uh, running in the, in the city council, uh, Lourdes Morosso de Guardia. Uh, I want to show you a little bit of her experience. Now, as I showed you previously just a moment ago, uh, she works with um, uh, a city year uh, as uh, assistant director uh, or senior vice president, excuse me, site, site stakeholder and other things. Uh, let's see. Uh, she's, it says that she has a, a extensive background in youth development and leadership. Uh, but as you also saw, uh, she's in connection with a lot of big corporations. Uh, I don't think any of them actually have a real uh, community connection, uh, except for what they have um, donated to, the, to various um, places. Um, now, let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I have a report for new leaders uh, council of uh, Columbus chapter. Okay. YWC, which is downtown. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm not really sure who's that about. The weather is. Uh, of course, it's endorsed by colleagues that are working.
try to show you a little bit of the technology we made as we made it out. We work on uh, the front end, looking at the date of this new one. Uh, since I know that you guys can't hear, hear what is going on with these things on, but uh, take this out and hopefully you hear it. Basically, I think that given the fact that she's involved in this and she has so many partners that could be involved in a lot of different um, things in regards to investigations in the city, limits that is, uh, I don't think that she'd be um, good for the for, for this panel if it hasn't uh, gone on yet. I don't know. So let's look into that. But um, anyways, let's let's just this. Diane Menashe, co-defendant Westerville Comptroller Wynn Smith, with Fred Beck, who drew 
through recent controversy from the FOP with his name popped up on the mayor's list for the working group to create an exclusive working board. I don't come with any perceived bias. But then as she declined our interview request, she initially agreed to send a few words about why she was chosen and her vision. Made later, Manashi isn't about face, telling us anything at all. I spoke to frontline officers who ignored me and I... People's Justice Project founder Tammy Courtney Alsada is among several people suing Chief Boyland, the city, and several officers in a recently filed federal complaint alleging excessive force during the protest. <laughs> Donations, you get the you know these and that. And they're like, I mean, 
and you know they're not working for you, they're not working for someone like myself, they're not working for anybody else. Uh, let's see, one, two, two, maybe three, maybe three, uh, yeah, it might be three or no, four, uh, four uh, unions compared to, I think it was like five or six different like banking or, or insurance companies. The only good thing about this is I believe it's about 90 percent, if not all, uh, are based in Ohio, at least that. But, you know, that's pretty much it. That's, yeah, and there's no way in heck I would go for anybody that just this much money at, or are involved in these many corporations but his partnerships and all that sort of thing. To me, if you're gonna be fine for people, you have to take the people's money, not the corporate not the corporation money, not the the banking system's money, all you know, that thing. Um anyway. And this would be the judge um who's running for election apparently. I didn't have the opportunity to vote her down last time around, so this is her. And let's see. Um, uh, as you can see, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney, uh, Franklin Court of Common Plea General Division, uh, Civil Litigation Association. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, okay. So she worked a contract towards personal injury product liability vaccines, um, medical malpractice vaccines, uh, worker compensation, I'm not sure about that part, employment and general litigation. Let's see. Okay. Volunteer, let's see, meeting crew. In this role, uh, she volunteered for many people, different organizations of group. The last volunteer opportunity was to take the cookies for the Ronald McDonald House. Okay, so the last thing she did was take cookies to someone. Or someone, I should say. Let's see. All right, so she's a big CNN person. Um, she has an interest in young professionals, right? Anyway, um, definitely not somebody that I would be looking, looking to either. Um, I'm looking to someone, as I just said, who doesn't take any money from corporations who has been able to establish enough of a network uh, to be able to establish you know, like some of what like Bernie Sanders did, except without being a part of DNC um, and not being a so-called independent uh, just to be involved in the DNC. In fact, right now, Bernie Sanders is actually a high-ranking official uh, within the DNC in the Senate, I think this. Um, but anyway, let's see what we have here. But I wanted to, uh, for the first time since I've actually been doing this, I think, uh, thoroughly go through these uh, four of the uh, candidates that are running uh, in my district. Um, I will not be going for anyone as far as that four goes. It would take, it needs to take someone who, one, doesn't take any corporate cash, two, uh, comes from an actual military background. Um, like, you know, if you're if you're from Medicare for all, you have to have to, you have to have a background in knowing about uh, medical insurance and all that, and knowing what it takes to go through that process, and how Medicare for all would actually benefit from that kind of, as far as that part goes. Anyway, uh, that is, this is a special presentation, I suppose. Uh, I wanted to kind of go over the some of the chatters that I've seen. I'll probably go. Uh, I'll go over. Go through more as time goes on. Get there. Once I get more, as far as that part goes, uh, I'm hoping that um, we do get million ballots because I don't think right now would be a good time to go into um, into churches. Just fall. Well, yeah, the, it's interesting because the only place they they actually allow voting is churches. From what I can, from what I've read up, was kind of to me kind of blasphemy. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Um, Subscribe to this channel, whichever it is you see this on. Um, support my anchor.fm slash Joseph Calvin, and I'll talk to you either tomorrow or Monday. Either way, I do have an interview on Monday with, I believe it's uh, Matthew Porstetter, uh, a MMT guy. Um, let's see. 
Uh, there's a couple of uh, times a week where I'm going to add, I will add double shots. So basically two per ones, um, maybe, I haven't decided yet. But on the 27th, I have uh, a Green Party Jacket and I have a, um, a I guess you can say Green Party Activist. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening or watching. And uh, peace out for now. I'll talk to you tomorrow, possibly.